So let's go ahead and I'm going to go back to the main page of Formberry. And we don't have any forms yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up on top here and I'm going to click on Add New. As soon as I do that, that's going to bring me over to the Add Form screen. And I'll be able to walk through each of these steps to make sure that the form is all set up. And you need to get this basic information in first. Now, this is going to be for the code of this form that is grayed out that will automatically be generated for us. So we need to create a title here. And we're going to go ahead and say that this is uh, our request form. And then we need to add a subtitle that is optional. So I'm not going to plug that in. Now, if you wanted a success URL, so when someone completes this form, if there's a specific page you want them to go to, go ahead and plug that information in. You could also give them a success message. You could also give an error message if there's an error in the form before it gets submitted. So let's say that there's a required field and they don't complete the required field. You could give those error messages there. You then have the visibility. If that is specified, the form will only show for that user role. So if you're familiar with the WordPress roles and the way that those are set up, maybe there's a certain role within your website that you want to be able to see this role or this form, you'll be able to set up their role here. And then you've got the WordPress post integration. And you could publish the submissions as WordPress comments. So when people fill in the form, do you want them to be able then to include that on your website as part of the integration? So that's the general tab. Now let's actually get into the design tab. So we'll go ahead and come over here to the design. And you can choose a theme. And if you click on the drop down here, you'll see that you have some different themes that are available for you to choose and I'm going to choose the blueberry and then you can choose the label position Do you want the position of the labels relative to the field Do you want them vertical or horizontal I'm gonna leave those as vertical you could also specify width height you can set up header information in here uh, a title so you can say do we want a title in this you can choose the font type for that font family so if you wanted a specific font, you could choose that. You can set the, the size, the color, if there's any errors, text color on that. So you're seeing that very quickly you can strongly customize this form if you're familiar with these settings. If you're not, it's fine to go with the default settings. You don't have to do all this customization. But if you're very familiar with your site, you want to make sure that this integrates and looks like your site, you're going to want to make sure that the design matches up with what you've already designed within your site. So let's keep building along these tabs and we'll go to the actual builder. And this is a very neat option with the form builder in Formberry. And I love this. I've worked with forms before where you need to know the name of the fields, you need to do this clicking or typing to put stuff in there or you're dealing with drop down lists. You don't have to do that with Formberry because they have the drag and drop option. So what I'm able to do is within here, if I wanted to have a text box, I can just click the text box, bring it over here and drop it in and that's going to give me a text box. If I want to do a uh, a date picker so I want them to choose the date I can go ahead and choose the date picker and move that over here if we're having them put their address in all I need to do is move the address over here so that automatically fills all of that in now if I'm looking at my form and I realize that this is going to be a lot of information in one long column and I want to break this up into two columns then what I have the ability to do is click on this and change this to two columns and now I have two columns. So it's going to fit it into a two column layout and I can work with it that way. So now let's say that I want a select box. I can come over here and put my select box in. So now that's on my form. 
And if we want to adjust these a little bit, so if I want to move the uh, date picker over to the first spot, I can do that. If I want my select box over next to it, I can move that. Very easy to do. Click, drag, move it around. If I want to group items together, I have my groups. If I want to add another group, grouping on here, I can grab this fields group, move it down here, and now that's going to give me another group in the, in the form. So very easy. Drop the items in here. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to grab a few more of these. Let's go ahead and grab a checkbox and I'm going to drop the, the checkbox in here and let's do a password box the radio buttons let's do the time picker and let's grab a file upload so I've got a bunch of these widgets in here and you're thinking great you've got the widgets there but that doesn't make a form there has to be more to it and there is. If you've noticed, as I've been dropping these widgets in here, you have these little triangles here. If you go ahead and click on that, that's going to allow you to edit the field. So with a date picker, this is going to allow you to do the dates. You can give this a label, and then you can give it a long description. And then if it's required, you can say that that's required. And then the individual will have to populate the date in there. And they can choose from that field. If you don't want it required, click on it again, it'll remove that checkbox. So the date picker is going to allow someone to choose a date. Now a select box, if we go ahead and click on the drop down for select box, you're going to be able to see on a select box that we can give a label, you can give a long description, and then in the field options what you're going to do is you're going to list each of the items that you want on your list. And you would type those in there one per line and then when the person comes to fill out the form they will see the little drop down arrow very similar to what we see up here click on it and they will see their options based on what you filled in on the field options so that's the select box now a text box if we take a look at that again we have the label and then we can set the max length this is going to be how many characters we're going to allow someone to fill in and this is going to be a free form text box where individuals can type in all the information that they need to. Quite often we do this with comments, uh, form comments, those types of things where we need a lot of information from them. They will fill in in a text box. Now the next item is the address. And if you click on the drop down for the address, you're going to see that you can add a label and a long description as well. This is going to allow your users to fill in their address information. The countries that they'll be able to choose will again be based on those items that we had from settings. So that's the address box. Now a check box, if you click on that, you'll see that you have a label, a description, and then you can give the field options. In this case, and then you can do the field options and if that is required. So again, a checkbox is going to be very similar to what we have here, where in this case it's going to be required. If you have multiple checkboxes, you would put those in there one per line, and then that would give them the list of checkboxes that they could choose from. A password box, let's go ahead and click on the settings for there. You have the type, again you give it a label, the max length and a long description if it's retired if it is required. And what that is going to allow you to do is let someone type in, but instead of their text, they're going to see asterisks displayed. So that's going to be your password box. Our next is going to be our radio buttons. You go ahead and fill in your label, description, and the field options. Again, this is very similar to the checkbox. The difference between a checkbox and a, rail, and a radio button is that a checkbox allows you to choose multiple items. A radio button allows you to choose one within the selection. So if in this field options I were to list three or four items within the field options, we're only going to be able to choose one of that three or four. So that's going to be your difference. You need to decide whether you want a radio button or a checkbox. The time picker, very similar to the date picker. When we take a look at this, again a label and a long description. 
this is going to allow them to choose the time. So this is going to be based more on a clock versus a calendar like the, the date picker. And let's take a look at the file upload and you'll be able to give this a label, a description. And then what you can do is you can put in the accepted file types. So if you're looking only for images, then you may only want to allow GIF, PNG, or JPEG files. If you're only looking for compressed files, you may want to only allow uh, .zip or RAR files. So you would allow that to be chosen there if you're going to allow them to do a file upload. So those are the main widgets. You can play around with all of those, play with those settings, but those are set up to very quickly drop those form elements into your site. Very easy to move around. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the notifications. So the notifications are being set up so that when someone completes the form, if you want that information to be sent to you or to admins, you, what you can do is you can enable this and put in the destination emails. And if we scroll down here further, you'll see the from information here, the subject, and the body. And if you're wondering what all this percent signs and information that's in here that just looks really foreign. If you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see that this is all information that can be picked up from the form and from the submission so that you can include that in the email. So you can customize these to have that information in so that each email coming in for that notification is custom based on the information that was submitted on the form. Now the last item that we have up here in our tabs is your custom auto reply. So we'll take a look at the custom auto reply and what this will do is actually send the information back to the sender, the person that completed this. So if they so if they completed the form, this will automatically be sent back to them with their information. This is really nice if you want to confirm with them that the information that they submitted is correct. And in some cases, it's a nice reminder to them that they have it in their email that they did submit something. So that's going to be your custom auto reply. So it looks at this point like we have everything that we need to have completed on the ad form. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I've got a couple different options. One is going to be the save and the save and close and I'm going to go ahead and for right now click on save and what that will do is that will save the form now we have been doing auto saves as we've gone along it's part of the features in there but now we've officially saved that and what we want to do then at this point is come back here to the general page where it took us automatically and it tells us that our information was saved successfully and you'll notice that code that I talked about in the beginning has been saved in here. That is the unique code for this form. So that again was automatically generated for you. So I want you to see that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to choose save and close. And then I'll save it. And now when we're back on our main page, you'll see that it says that the form was updated and there's our request form listed right there. So that's what it takes to go through and add a form.